podcast, the platform to spread knowledge on insurance, innovation, digital disruptions, and entrepreneurship. Our website, insuredxstory.com, and we are available on Spotify, Apple, Google, and Amazon Music. Today, we will discuss on the topic, how is the evolution of the mobility market is impacting insurance practices? And for now, I'm delighted to welcome our guest, Luca Rasingnan, who is the director of insurance intelligence at Capgemini, focusing on translating market and customer research into actionable insights that drive strategic decision making. His work includes implementing effective research methodologies to understand the big picture and help CSU executives and senior business leaders assess the implication of innovation on their business strategy. Luca's primary areas of focus include InsurTech, blockchain, IoT trends, and many more. Lastly, but not the least, Luca also co-authored several reports on the evolution of the insurance industry. He works actively with the InsurTech community as a mentor and has been a guest speaker at several industry and academic events. So Luca, a warm welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Great to be here. So, you know, uh, to jumping to the agenda for the day, as the mobility market undergoes rapid transformation with the rise of shared mobility services, or even in the auto, autonomous vehicles, you know, uh, field and electric transformation, how are insurance companies adopting to meet the changing needs of customers and mitigate any potential risk? It's, it's kind of a transition that we are going on from, uh, you know, uh, vehicles that are essentially, you know, fuel led. And now we're moving to electric side and how the, the transformation industry is changing in itself. So where do you see uh, insurance, you know, doing its role out here? Yeah, great, uh, great question. So, so I think we, at Capgemini, we spent a lot of time thinking about this this question. In fact, we um, we we launched a, a report earlier this year, which is our World Property and Casualty Insurance Report 2023, that really sp- speaks about this this very topic. Uh, how to drive growth in this in this evolving mobility ecosystem? I think the starting point there is first of all to understand what what customers uh, want, if right. you like, and and of course customers are uh, excited about connected and 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 alternate energy vehicles, are relatively excited about autonomous vehicles, but uh, what we found is really that um, looking at the future, people are not replacing existing mobility options yet but rather adding new ones. And really this is, I think this is really important to keep in mind that uh, um, for the short and medium term, we're talking two to to four, five years, we're seeing the adoption of alternative transportation, including uh, micro mobility, multimodal transportation, electric, shared, all of those beautiful things to double um, in the immediate future. But uh, the, the, the reliance on the traditional cars uh, to remain quite high, so I think that's yeah. that's that's really the start. It's an addition of options rather than a replacement, um, and I think this should inform uh, insurers' uh, strategy and really um, how they should think about this this transformation. From that standpoint, as always, there is no a one size fits all, but it's, there is rather a, a a series of options that become more relevant uh, on the longer term, but for which we see perfectly viable customer segments today. And, and if you think about it, what do we mean with that, uh, I think it really starts, how do you meet this, this customer segment needs? It really starts with the continuous evolution of usage-based uh, insurance, right? From the classic uh, uh, model of the premium adjusted based on the driver behavior data, we're seeing different models emerging. Embedded insurance, of course, is getting tractions uh, with OEMs and fleet owning um, the primary customer touch point uh, um, with the customers. We think insurers need to think, how do, how, do, how do they play in this space? And really think about that from an ecosystem partnership perspective. We don't believe that OEMs will all go the the Tesla way, if you like, right. um, yep. in terms of uh, becoming underwriter and claims de- and claims handler. They want the right partner, but they need a partner that can really co-design solution uh, with them. So I think that's really 
the key opportunity to go down that route, but doing so uh, with a clear value proposition for the partners. Yeah. The next step, and then I'll uh, I'll stop there. Uh, but uh, the next step, I think, is also the thing: what's next, right? And what's next means um, how do you, how can you think about these multimodal options together and from a Capgemini standpoint, we think about it in terms of modular subscription insurance. The idea that basically you can offer uh, a product that cover different type of, of transportation uh, that enable you to move from point A to point B and have a, a comprehensive coverage, whether you're driving your car, jumping on an Uber or taking a micro mobility um, electric scooter as an example. So we think that's another option in terms of the way forward. This is not yet mainstream but those insurers that can find the right way to bundle together um, coverage of different type and value added services, we think will become increasingly successful in the future. Yeah. So where do you see, see data you know, playing a role here, especially in shaping the insurance offerings for the mobility market? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, of course, we, we can't talk about uh, any type of future if you if you want without talking about about data. Um, I was a I was a at an event a few weeks ago in New York, and uh, um, someone told me that uh, connected cars uh, today generate anywhere between 1.5 and 15 terabytes of data per hour. I think that's really has to just to be. <laughs> Uh, the starting point in terms of letting us uh, pose and, and reflect on what it means. It's an incredible amount of data. It's an unprecedented amount of data. Um, and insurers need to think how, how to crack that conundrum of what do we do with all that. The insurance industry yeah. has always been uh, uh, focused on data. There's nothing uh, new for, from one end in terms of uh, getting the insight from the data, but there is, there is everything new in terms of how do you manage this amount of data. Um, so, what's the way forward there? Uh, from from our standpoint, there are really two elements. The first one, the first one is about uh, how how can you be picky to an extent? How do you identify in that universe of 1.5 to 15 terabytes of data the data set that really matters to you to provide uh, a, an accurate pricing um, without uh, uh, creating models that are too complex. And the reason for that is twofold, right? We all know how energy consuming our data models. So it's a win-win if we can find models that are accurate without relying on the whole data set uh, uh, that, we, that we can see uh, being generated. And of course, the other element is we need to think also about the regulator. Regulator are very keen on algorithm, ex algorithm explicability. If insurers, um, insurers need to explain how certain underwriting or claims decision are uh, being made. And of course, the more variable uh, go into a model, the more you end up with a black box model, the less likely this is to actually being able to yeah. improve it from the regulator. So I think there is this triangle, this tension. There is an unprecedented amount of data and insurers need to find the right partnerships to dig capture, uh, digest, uh, or rather capture, store, and digest the data. But they also need to think, of, do I really need this whole universe of data? Is it really helping me to be more accurate? Or can I be more picky? Can I be more selective? How do I go about that? And how do I buy, how do I get my uh, regulator's approval? So I think that's really the starting point from the yeah. data, um, which goes in hand with the technology. Because of course, to be able to do all of these, you need a, a very rich and diverse set of uh, technology, you need a clear technology roadmap that helps you build the right uh, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, cloud capabilities, telematics and connected device capabilities to collect this data, generate insights and share them with the customer as and where required. Yep. So I think you've mentioned a very valid point that, you know, uh, there's a vast amount of data that's available. And of course, insurers may perhaps absorb those data but what's in, what's important is whether actually they need those amount of data and what mm -hmm. exactly they need what they need to absorb to make rightful decision this is the key you know to uh, mm -hmm. any sort of transformation that they seek yes so that's, absolutely that's a valid point there uh, so you know with the emergence of innovative mobility solutions like what we are uh, seeing like 
ride sharing, micro mobility, peer to peer platforms. How are insurance companies addressing this, you know, unique challenges related to the liabilities, coverages, and even the claims management in such evolving landscapes? Yeah, that's a that's a that's a great question. I think we need to number one, we need to consider carefully the time horizon, right? So if you say, well, what's the what's the liability situation in 2040? Well, we're we're likely much more towards a, a, a corporate model um, and maybe even a self-insurance model as the liability sh and uh, as the autonomous vehicles become more uh, more common and the liability shift on there on that end. I think for the shorter term, uh, we're, we will see the start of that journey. So if you if you think very broadly that right now uh, thinking about uh, auto etc the split between personal and commercial lines is probably 80 20 i wouldn't be surprised to see that uh, shifting to 60 or 70 to 30 or 40 by 2030 so certainly we're seeing a shift towards um commercial liabilities and uh, from that standpoint uh, that of course has implication for insurers on who are their customers, what type of uh, propositions they want to offer them, and importantly, uh, who has the bargaining power in that equation, right? Yeah. How does that change uh, given the, the, the different profile of the buyer compared to what we uh, have historically seen? So I think that's really the starting point. Um, when it comes to, uh, to liability, I think the other point, of course, to keep in mind is what is being covered. I think there's been a lot of discussion around uh, um, the the shift uh, uh, towards uh, towards uh, the, the uh, autonomous liability, etc. But the other element is also cyber liability, right? As these cars become more and more connected, what happens if they are hacked? What type of who provides coverage in that case? What happens if their safety uh, locks are easily hackable from uh, remote? And we have seen that, right? Without uh, naming anybody. We all seen the name of certain auto manufacturers in the news lately because it was easy to hack their safety protocol for their locks and uh, and and steal those cars relatively yeah. relatively easily. So I think there is really a question there around how do you embed that element of cyber coverage um, in in your product, and uh, really how do you uh, create around that a universe of value added services? Because of course. Uh, uh, we have seen that more more on the fleet side right now in terms of location of the fleet, optimization of routes. That those are all services that insurers or their partners can provide. What happens on the personal side? How do you help uh, um, individuals to take better care of their cars, to take better care uh, in terms of maintenance and repairs to make that more uh, to, to make that uh, more effective, how what type of additional services you can offer in terms of fatigue detection or other risk uh, uh, mitigation measures, I think that becomes quite uh, uh, quite interesting. So I think those are some of the building blocks, if you like, uh, when it comes to the challenge related to liability and coverage. Mm -hmm. Claims management uh, exists in its own, uh, and I think claims management remains critical, right? Remains the moment of truth even if we believe uh, that the whole embedded angle will become more and more prominent um claims will remain the moment of truth not only that but it will actually become more important as one of the relatively rare touch point if you want from the insurer to the uh to the actual uh policy holder in that in, in that yeah. situation right so I think the the idea of really developing those advanced claims capability to take advantage to create a differentiating experience there is is essential. So it, it well it, it's been said before, right? But it's really about delivering a frictionless experience. It's really about automating that first notice of loss uh, and the whole process to offer a uh, faster experience and deploy advanced analytics to enable automated decisions or escalation and in turn re reducing fraud uh, and enhancing uh, the the customer experience what i can say is that uh, from our standpoint we have seen those insurers that have been able to do that to really benefit in terms of increased net promoter scores and increase in reduced operational costs 
So in a world where uh, claims are, are, the cost of claims is going up, both because of inflation and because of the number of uh, sensors embedded in a car, uh, the benefit of increased the MPS and reduced operational cost uh, really create a win-win alignment, if you want, between policyholders and insurers, thus creating a significant opportunity to create value for, for all those uh, involved. So that would be the other important element to really double down on that, uh, on that single moment of truth uh, so that uh, it can create benefit for all the parties involved. Yeah, true. Absolutely. You know, uh, execution and deliverable is, it, you know, what would uh, makes m more sense than just talk about technology or, you know, mm -hmm. understanding what the uh, infrastructure looks like, but what lacks and where the gap is, is essentially how it's being executed to solve the real problem. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and, you know, talking about coverage, where do you see, or rather, how do you see insurance companies adopting their coverage models and products to meet the evolving needs of individuals, especially in the era of uh, multi-model transportation? Yeah. So, so again, I, I'd start uh, uh, with uh, with the customer, right? Because I think that that's really what what's the opportunity here for insurers to to to, to refocus on a genuine genuine um, customer centric approach. And and according to to the to to the survey we completed as part of the report uh, the, I was mentioning earlier, what we found is that uh, in a in a in an ideal scenario, if you want, uh, uh, customers expect. Uh, uh, one policy that covers them irrespective of whether they're driving a car or a scooter or whichever other transportation option they choose rather than a traditional uh, personal vehicle car uh, car insurance coverage. So I think that's that's a, that's where the preferences are moving towards at least according to our uh, to our study. So when I think about that the the question, it's a question of coverage, but I think it's also a question of mindset. So before going to the coverage, I'll talk about the mindset for a second. To, to uh, if these are the expectation, when we look at the at the typical readiness to develop these type of uh, solutions from uh, um, from uh, insurers, it's usually relatively limited. The the talent might not be there. The product development is struggling. And uh, we think to bridge that gap, the opportunity is really to develop or to evolve rather the the internal culture from a rigid and solid approach to a silo free and digital culture culture. And I think it's what becomes really cl critical is deciding within that uh, the transformation, what are the core competencies that insurers want to keep in house and which one are the core competencies that can be accessed through partnerships, through ecosystems and so on and so forth. And the other thing that is important is recognizing that uh, creating the right proposition will require trial and error. So entrusting smaller teams to experiment, uh, to create my minimum viable product, to fail fast where needed will be um, will be quite quite critical. So I think that's there is this element of cultural evolution as well that will uh, that will be needed to to meet this customer expectation. Yeah. Um, and and thus, from a from a from a coverage standpoint, I go back a little bit to what I was saying earlier, right? So the coverage element, uh, uh, there are different ways to to design it uh, and to implement it. It could be um, it could be an umbrella product uh, that covers all the mobility risk. Uh, it could be a rider uh, on top of another policy that includes certain additional um, risks that were not previously covered. I think the main thing is really listening to what the customers want and uh, starting to experiment with this coverage today. We have examples of some of the largest uh, European insurers, for example, uh, really uh, doubling down on the micro mobility space and uh, starting to experiment uh, what type of models and what, so what type of profitability it can generate. Very often, it's, it's not just the micro mobility play on its own, which is important, but it's also getting the understanding of this type of market to be able to embed this type of coverage in other products farther down the line. So I think that's really 
the the opportunity and, and the need to experiment with this different type of mobility to start building the data set uh, the actuarial uh, experience uh, um, and the and the product development experience to be able then to combine the different building blocks one thing i'll say uh, to conclude on this point is that there is a an opportunity in this coverage in this product journey if you like to evolve from uh, product developer to solution co-designer and and that's really important i think it's uh, as mobility becomes an experience becomes a, a a way of moving from point a to point b insurance can evolve with that idea right and the the, the logic is really that rather than seeing insurance as a discrete product connected to a specific asset your car your motorcycle or whatever it is the opportunity is to think about the insurance as embedded into an ecosystem and for the solution rather than to be developed separately from the insurers to be co-developed with the ecosystem uh partners of choice right so i think that's really goes to the opportunity in terms of listening to customer preferences on one end and working with your ecosystem partners to say well as an ecosystem partner you might have deeper expertise on that specific part of mobility but i bring to the table my risk management capabilities my long-standing expertise on managing risk and if we work together we can design a better customer journey which hopefully increase the relevancy and the willingness uh, uh, to use them from the customer, thus making both, yeah. of, both of us happy. So I think that, that, that evolution from product developer to solution co-designer is really important in this journey towards the future of mobility. Yeah, I think it's, it's definitely, you know, it's not a, a one-man army. There should be, mm -hmm. you know, partnership, a robust partnership. You know, mm -hmm. experts, platforms must come together and evolve yes. together to actually, you know, uh, address the uh, tomorrow's expectations especially when transportation and every other fields are evolving you know faster than we can perhaps think of exactly so, i think the the partnership and the ecosystem is really yeah. the key to unlock this future absolutely well thank you luca fantastic discussion thank you for sharing your thoughts today a true delight to have you as our guest thanks Surya. thank you for setting this up and looking forward to the next opportunity Thank you, everyone. And lastly, to wrap this up, thank you for listening and see you at our next episode. Take care and stay safe. Goodbye for now.